Hey everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Christine. I like to read dark and disturbing things. Today I just have a check-in uh, for Garb August. We are halfway through the month of August and I just want to share what I've read so far this month of Trashy Reads. Let's check it out. <laughs> I haven't read a ton of trash just yet. I've only read three books, but I wanted to check in because um, I wanted to talk about them while they're still kind of fresh in my mind. I have been reading other books in between my trashy reads that I've been reading. It's not, <laughs> it's not just these three, but I just wanted to check in and see uh, what everyone else has been reading and let you know what I've been reading. Uh, so in case you're somehow unaware of the greatest reading event of all time, um, <laughs> as Ollie calls it, I believe, <laughs> Garb August is Criminali's idea, and it is just a time to celebrate reading kind of trashy books. And by trashy, he doesn't mean that in any kind of negative way, just maybe books that you, you wouldn't brag about reading. Um, maybe something that the way that I see it is anything that's a guilty pleasure is a trashy read. So that could be a wide range of things. And maybe for some people, those types of reads are normal and that's fine. There's no judgment here. This is just to have a trashy fun time. So I've read three things. I think I'm going to save my favorite for last. Um, and I'm going to talk about the book. Number one is the Rue and it says, see out back. And this is by Alan Baxter. And let's just take a moment to appreciate this beautiful, evil kangaroo cover. Um, Cause that's what sold me. I heard about this one from Kelsey over at her channel, Slime and Slashers. If you are not familiar, go check out her channel. She's a lot of fun. From watching her channel, I have been encouraged to pick up quite a few books that she's very passionate about. I started talking about this one. This is an animal attack book, which I've only, as far as I can think of, read one animal attack book, and that was The Rats by James Herbert. Uh, this is about a killer kangaroo, and that's all I needed to know to be sold on this idea. I just thought it sounded like a lot of fun, and that's what this book is. It's a shorty. It's only... 122 pages and it contains a glossary in the back because there are so many there's so much Aussie slang in this book that actually makes it a lot of fun and then the the glossary in the back will help let you know what those words mean a lot of them you could kind of figure out from context but some things are very specific and there is a phrase someone will have to tell me if this is like really a common phrase in Australia or not but I really liked it where was it <laughs> so the phrase was we're not here to fuck spiders which just basically means we're not here to waste time let's get going um I I want to start incorporating that into my um into my vocabulary we're not here to fuck spiders so let's get into uh this reading wrap up but this book was a fun time it just was a lot of honestly the plot I could do without like I wasn't there for the plot I was there for the kangaroo kills okay and that and the Aussie over the top Aussiness of this made this a lot of fun um there is one particular kill that I really liked and I guess like cover your ears or uh skip ahead about 30 seconds if you don't want to be spoiled on a on a kangaroo kill but my favorite one was this kangaroo um, rips off the arms of somebody and then uses like the arms with the hands still attached to like slap someone around <laughs> and it just was so freaking ridiculous that I loved it um yeah so if you're just looking for a silly fun time animal attack book the rue is for you all right the next book I read is actually my very first paperbacks from hell it was when darkness loves us by Elizabeth Engstrom I purchased this quite some time ago before I even realized what paperbacks from hell were. Um, I purchased this one and it was Lisa Tuttle's Nest of Nightmares on the cover alone. I kept seeing them around. I was like, what is that? I, I want to check that out. And then of course they sat on my shelf forever. Um, 
So one of the themes like for Garbagas was to read a paperback from hell. So I thought I should finally pick up one of these and I just randomly picked. I thought that this was originally a one like full novel, but it's actually two shorter stories. So it's only 230 pages and the first 80 pages was the first story and the rest was the second story. Um, and the back gives you hardly any idea of what either of those are about and I, I personally think was pretty misleading <laughs> even the the few sentences that were written on the back so ignore that um the first story I actually really liked I gave it four out of five stars it was about a young girl who was newly married and she's just like goofing around in the backyard and she goes into this underground area what I'm imagining in my head was like it's on the property but not connected to the house and you know how like in in the Wizard of Oz where they open like the hatch and you go underground to uh, stay safe that's kind of what I thought it was but it seems like there's like a whole tunnel of uh, things down there I believe in the book it was mentioned that um, it was maybe used for some for some slaves to try to get away like they were making the, the underground tunnels um it, it's not super clear so she goes in this underground area and the top comes down into so she can't get out it's being underground in complete darkness um she can't even see her hand in front of her face so that's uh where i believe this title comes from when darkness loves us because it was a fun time if complete darkness scares you like hearing things that you can't see at all freaks you out a little bit I found that that is one of the things that does kind of get me a little bit on edge because I don't really get scared when I'm reading but when I read Below by Laurel Hightower um, and when I read this I was feeling a little anxious like like I would not want to be somewhere where I was completely lost one of my senses so I thought that was a really fun book or a really fun story it took some weird twists and turns and I have to say that when I read this I thought about VC Andrews quite a few times even though I've only read one VC Andrews book um it had a very similar feel with just like the ridiculousness of some of the plot twists um but I really like that story the second story I did not love um and this is also where the VC Andrews really comes in because I read My Sweet Audrina and I did not love that book. And the second story has a lot of similarities. Um, the main character is, she was someone that was born um, physically different. And the use of the R word in this, in this story is just rampant. Like, I don't know maybe it's a tie for my sweet Audrina even just how many times this word was used and I understand this was written in the 80s and uh, certain words were used then that are no longer acceptable but I don't know why like in the 80s did they think that that was a major plot for any story because I've now read two where that's the like that is the plot and this one really did not make sense at all you just start getting snippets of other things happening for other people in this little town. I can't even tell you what it's about because it is just about this woman living her life. I guess and people treating her poorly or taking advantage of her. Um, I don't know this. The plot is so choppy and it is so long for no reason for a short book it just went on and on forever and I'm like okay like maybe the end is really gonna pay off and it just didn't so I'm sorry the second story for me was a one star I kind of wanted to DNF it but I mean I was that far into a short book and I wanted to finish my first paperback from hell so this may be an unpopular opinion first story four stars weird creepy I liked it second story skip it. All right. And the third book and my favorite one that I read was a was a Lehman book. This is my first time reading Richard Lehman. I got this book Midnight's Lair from one of the add-ons like the used copies that they at put in Abominable Book Club and let's 
just look at the cover because it's fun. And I remember reading the back and thinking it sounded pretty interesting. And then I just hear about how much people do not like Richard Lehman's writing. And um, this, I would say, definitely fits in the good trash, trash for Garb August. Um, so this is about a an underground cave that has been turned into like a tourist attraction. And we're following several people. Uh, one of them is like a tour a tour guide, I guess for this, they take people down in the elevator, they go out in this little boat, they see the cave, they come back and, um, you know, they go through the gift shop, that kind of thing. Well, when they are down there with a group of people, all of a sudden the power goes out and they are just put into pitch black again with the darkness. Um, so they are in this cave. They cannot see anything. They do have a couple flashlights, but it's not enough really for this area, but they do have a little bit of light. And then they realize that they cannot get, even though they make their way back through the water, they can't make it back up the elevators because the elevators have come crashing down and are on fire. So they have no idea what's going on, what's going on top side that's made this happen. It's obviously not just a power failure um, because now the elevators are on fire. Luckily, the elevators are providing some light and some heat. So a group of people decide that they are going to, instead of just waiting for help to come get them because they don't know what's going on up upstairs, <laughs> up on top of the ground, they decide that they're going to go this other way that has been like sealed off by humans. It's been walled off. Walled off. Um, but they know that if they can break through this wall, there's some other way out through the tunnel. So they decide that they're going to do that and all hell breaks loose. They are not alone in this cave. I will say I was completely surprised by what was in the cave with them. I did not see that coming. I loved it. It was creepy. It was, it was good. I was hooked the entire time when I was reading this. Like I never felt like, oh, I have to pick this up. I wanted to know what, was, what would happen. And I can see where people are coming from saying that layman's writing is kind of pervy or cheesy. Yes, yes, it is both of those things. Um, all of these characters are constantly thinking about sex, constantly. Um, <laughs> they're, it's like the worst possible situation, but everyone wants to get it on. And it was just so abundant that it was just funny to me. The sexual parts were not so creepy uh, or pervy as they were just ridiculous. It like added to the ridiculousness. It was the pervy sprinkles on top of this ridiculous plot and I was eating it up. There is also a subplot going on with the owner of this. Um, there's like also a hotel on the site there on this touristy cave thing. Um, there's the owner of the hotel and his son who is a freaking creep. He is 100% a creep and he's only like 13, which makes it even creepier. And there's a whole backstory there that is quite dark and disturbing and disgusting and um yeah I don't know what to, I don't know what to say without um ruining it but it put some real danger into this story which made it fun yeah you almost feel wrong reading some of the things that happen but I don't know I guess I guess I like that so I'm not sure if I picked a good layman book or if there's something wrong with me and I just like Richard Lehman. I'm not sure what because I'm going to have to read some more to find out. But I don't know. I <laughs> I feel like I'm in like a confession. I'm in a confessional booth telling you all that I like Richard Lehman. If I had to sum up what Garbogist should be about to me, cuz Garbogist is different for everyone. You take from Garbogist what you will. But for me, this 100% fit the bill. It was fun, trashy, stupid, ridiculous, uh, 
overly sexual for no reason and wonderful. I had a good time. I gave it four out of five stars. I feel like after just hyping it up, I should say that was five stars, but I don't just throw five stars out there. All right, I'm hoping that I can get to some more books before Garb August is over, especially I have some of my Xena books that I wanna get to. I have Adventures and Babysitting, the novelization, but I also have some books that I've already mentally committed to reading for the month for different book clubs and things. So I just read too slow. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> if you're participating in Garb August, I would love to hear what you've read so far or what your favorite book was. I know that um, another fellow booktuber, uh, Cliff over at Cliff's Dark Gems also read this and we pretty much had the exact same opinion. So if you're looking for some total ridiculous trash, I suggest picking this one up. At the end of the month, I will let you know what other trashy reads I got to and what else I've read for the month. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys are all having a great trashy time this month. Have a great week and stay spooky.